with Aaron and Abigail. They have uh, taken over the location in Matthews, North Carolina. Um, moved down here from Indiana very recently. So um, welcome. I'd love Thank to you. just hear from you guys a little bit. Quick intro. Tell us a little bit about yourselves and what brought you to Charlotte and looking into ISI. Um, I'm from Louisiana, went to LSU, and my first job after college was sales in Scottsdale, Arizona, and that's where I met him. He's born and raised from Arizona, and then we have followed family to Charlotte. We love the weather out here, and we have three kids, eight, six, and three. Don't get me started. You know, like every mom <laughs> will talk about their kids for forever, so... Yeah, for my background, uh, you heard how we met and came to Charlotte. Uh, I'm born and raised athlete, sports, just been in football and baseball my whole life, played yeah. college ball and just been around fitness. If you would ask me when I was 20, I'd be a personal trainer. Yeah. Uh, got into the sales gig and found, you know, making a lot of money and met my wife and kind of put that on the back burner until very recently. Because so, the sales on the back burner, not the what? Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Never the wife. No, no. Sales had to turn up there. Uh, but the dream has always been to be around fitness and, you know, scratching that itch of just working out in different gyms and different facilities. We, we always wanted to own something. And that was something that brought us together when we were first dating. Uh, I was a little overweight before I met her and uh, we would do burpees in the, in the park. Yeah. That's how we met. Yeah. And fitness has always brought us together. That's cool. Uh, so that's why we're excited to be here now. I love that. So you guys just recently moved from Indiana to Charlotte, right? And so talk me a little bit about how you found ISI and like what that looked like for you guys. You found it. Yeah, I find I found it. So like anywhere we will vacation or travel, I try to find a gym. And we we're at my parents' house off Potter Road in Matthews, and I like googled isi was less than three minute drive and my dad said oh yeah i saw that like isi whatever that is and so i was like okay i'm going tomorrow morning at 5 a.m uh i got a free pass and then it happened to be like i was so excited to come back that was like a spring break and then the summer we came for two weeks and i was like okay i know i'm going to isi and got him to go i was like that's <laughs> not for me i'm not doing that you know i was doing the football workouts i'm, I'm heavy stuff you know bodybuilding and she finally twists my arm. Yeah, there was nothing else while visiting my parents mm -mm. for us to, like, no. you know, yeah. really do. So he came with me that summer, and then we came again for, like, fall break. We kept visiting and visiting, knowing, like, we, we loved the hooked. area. Yeah, obsessed. And yeah. so then then it was like, oh, we're seeing the in-laws? Great. Let me get my yeah. ISI stuff. Yeah. Right. I'm ready to go. Oh, yeah, he'd buy me, like, a crop top every <laughs> oh. time we came. Yep. So I had a lot of, yeah, that I had bunch a lot of, of ISI gear before being, like, an official member. And then uh, we looked for over a year buying a home, and we ended up buying one that's, like, 1.2 miles from the location. Had nothing to do with it. No. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So I relate to that as well, Aaron, because I'm a, I'm a college football guy myself. So for me, you know, I know what really attracted me once I started to find ISI and, and working out at ISI. For you guys, what were your, your initial experience? You know, what, what that first like, oh, I'm not about it, you know, to mm -hmm. like just raving about it. What were some of those things that really stood out to you that you loved about the experience? Yeah, my fear was that I wouldn't be able to go as hard as I was used to. And that was very quickly transformed. And I realized, oh, you can push yourself no matter where you're at. You know, you can be a retiree or a top level athlete. And I experienced that real quick. Yeah. And then I had flashbacks to the best parts of sports. Yeah. High fives, you know, congratulations, breaking it down on three, you know, and partner stuff. Yeah. And that's that's why I was hooked. Yeah, I think there's a big stigma just around boutique fitness in general being mm -hmm. like, core cardio galore you know you're you're riding a bike all day or what yeah i didn't want to hop on a treadmill like yeah. i wasn't into that and that's so i think that isi for me one of the things that i love is that it's very strength focused and strength based mm -hmm. so you know it, it's attractive across all avenues in that regard high intensity yeah all the things so it's interesting to talk to other athletes that see the same thing in it because I, boutique fitness for me i tried all the orange theories and the f45s all the things and it never spoke to me I didn't want to mm -hmm. sit there and run all day or whatever. Well, and then she brought up the kids. So now we got three kids and I want to be able to play with the boys. And now when I go to ISI, I feel like I'm more equipped to chase them around because yeah. it's, it's functional. It's really training for life. Yeah. That's cool. So talk to me a little bit about your experience so far. So you guys came in and you purchased, ultimately you purchased an existing location, right? So, um, 
Talk to me about, you know, some of the strategies you're bringing to the market with that and opportunities there from doing local events and working with the staff and really doing community outreach and ultimately why you're wanting to, to dive into the community where you guys moved to. Um, I think us being so fresh to like coming to meet the team here and really looking like, because what got me was ISI Iron Sharpens Iron that it was from like a biblical standpoint, like that's how my friends and I have felt like our whole life. So I was like, okay, I, I really, I believe what they believe and the value of that. And I think the core values on us, like it's hot, you know, when you get on something and you're like, okay, you're super passionate, you're mm -hmm. on fire for it. Yeah. It's like, that's exactly what Matthew's um, is, is asking. You know, the members are so devout there and they just need, I think this passion that we're bringing back and even just getting into the facility now, it's it's kind of been contagious. So yeah. it, it's really good to like stay, We I wanna maintain this. Like I don't want a year to go by and us, you know, kind of get complacent. So right now we are on fire, so it's easy to think that, but I'm thinking like the longevity of what ISI stands for and, and our community really wants someone to put their blood, sweat and tears into um, ISI and the coolest thing about taking over, like she's saying, an existing uh, location has been the community rallying around us mm -hmm. yeah. and saying, wow, I love seeing how excited you are. We're showing up every day trying to learn the people and they're helping us. And then members will come up with ideas. Hey, we used to do this and we'd love to try this. And we're like, yeah, let's go for it. And yeah. so the yeah, goal is great, great we live leadership. in the community. Yeah. We want ISI Matthews to be a staple in the community. You know, and it wasn't quite there. And so the strategies behind that is getting to know every member. Where do they work? You know, where do they live? What can we do to come alongside them in their everyday life? Yeah. And that community has just blossomed. I mean, I'm out there coaching uh, Pop Warner for our sons, yeah. and I've got members coming up and being like, hey, here's the new do, owners. Yeah, we got to do something here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's do something for the Pop Warner teams and all that. So it's been really fun. I know too, as I talk with new people coming in and opening ISIs across the country, um, people decide to manage and hire their staff different ways, right? So talk to me a little bit about, I mean, you, you're not coaching any of the sessions, right? Mm -hmm. You're not facility manager, you know, sales. No. So you guys are not in any leadership position in the facility, but yeah. you're around. Walk through what that looks like from a staffing and sales. Team. Yeah, so this location had a really interesting setup. Uh, so we are stepping in as a little bit as a facility manager for now, but I believe in empowering your people. And so the first thing I did when I came in was I told every sales leader that there's a facility manager position that we're going to leave for whoever steps up. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to see who's stepping up. And it's really cool to see people who hadn't been doing certain things are now picking up oars and they're rowing, yeah. you know, they're finding things and they're coming up with ideas. So that's kind of how we did it was we're, we're going to show up every day. Uh, sales is that's where we met with sales. So that's my thing. Yeah. And so we're trying to say, hey, where can we market? How can we get people in the door and then try to equip and empower everybody in there to step up? And the leaders are going to show themselves. Yeah. They always do. So it's a little competition. Yeah. Have you found I know a lot of people's fears coming in is like uh, finding the right help. You know, how do you get the right people in the door, especially with coaching and this industry being your modality really putting that product on the floor so how have you found that process to be so far finding the right people i've been pleasantly surprised i mean we've hq has rallied around us in a really good way given us the tools linkedin the moment they see isi and it's coaching we've had what at least two auditions a week the past few weeks yeah. uh and so we've we had bring in a really good head performance coach we did. Yeah, that was really helpful. The moment we took over, we had a head performance coach reach like out. The couple of weeks before uh, we were presented the offer, it was almost every coach went on to go do like full time nursing. Mm -hmm. One became like a full time drug driver. So our members had lost like three of their royal, really loyal coaches. And so we we're like, OK, we really need to get someone in there that's not going anywhere so that our members know like, OK, we're going to be okay we're going to have good coaches so we did find a really good head performance coach and know that um as we grow that we'll be able to find that fm role and then i think you know pretty quickly like who gets it who wants it like isi it's not just a job that we want them to show up to get paid for but we want them to like believe in us believe in the company isi and like the product is like amazing you know like it is transformational so 
It's fun how God provides, though, because you've got a member's daughter who's working every night as a sales lead. Mm -hmm. You've got another member's son who's leading 5 a.m. classes as a coach. And so that community aspect just fills itself. And then all of a sudden, you're talking to somebody who knows someone. Uh, I was at an alumni event for UNC Charlotte last night. And this kid's like, hey, I want to come learn sales. I want to learn business. You know, and so it's just being involved. Mm -hmm. Those opportunities come. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Last question. Talk to me a little bit about the energy in your facility and how important that is and how you drive that. That's everything. (laughs) Yeah. How it is now? uh, Yeah. Yeah. How it's going to be? Yeah. Tell him. Well, so he started going like every morning at 430 and he, people were like, who is this guy? Like 5 a.m. Just smiling, like high vibing, like he's loud, like his intensity. He like wakes up, takes his first, like I'm awake and he's intense. So like, that's great. And then I'm just, I'm wild as well. We're hoping that, because energy is a big deal. You know, we have a lot of, um, we're out a little bit in the suburbs and people wake up with 5 a.m. crews big, but we have like, you know, moms, first time fitness people. And I, I think some of them dread like working out. But when we come like that energy from the front door is contagious and we're trying to just like lead by example on that. Yeah, something we're implementing is be the light. Like, be the light for those who are coming in, because this is their opportunity to leave the stresses of life and enter a facility where they can see people that are happy to be there, you know, and we're giving them the best 50 minutes of their day. And so that's that's really big for us. Uh, And let's be honest, you know, the the opportunity we had to acquire this location was because the energy wasn't quite there. Uh, But what we've seen is when we brought the energy what ISI already stands for, it very quickly everybody jumps up and everybody's really excited to get on that bus. Yeah, yeah hire the right people, yeah. And it's been really fun. Cool. Let's leave uh, people watching, you know, they're, they're probably interested at some point in going through something similar to what you guys have, looking at a new location with ISI, starting a, a franchise, right? So give them a quick, you know, little piece of advice that you'd say, hey, if you're interested, you know, what would you tell people that are watching? do it yeah do it <laughs> no, well oh for me okay me i'll think about something and i'm like thinking about doing it and i'm like okay well i'm thinking about doing it and it's like with if you're starting from ground zero it's like you just gotta like rip the band-aid off and do something and then it's like there'll be it's because we were talking about this it seems like huge elephants like okay one one bite, bite at a one time one bite at a time because yeah. it can you might have an interest meeting of opening an isi franchise and be like oh, okay that's you know it seems so much mm-hmm. but um it is really doable and to get support around you if you're thinking about opening an isi there's going to be moments where you're overwhelmed and just understand that'll pass and the reason it'll pass is because you'll see there's a lot of work to be done But like Abigail said, there's small bites. There's one step. And as long as you take the right step and you just focus on the next step in front of you, you're going to climb the mountain and you're going to have fun doing it. There's a lot of times that we're stressed, but I was just thinking about it to get today. I told you the vision I had where we're wearing these silly green hats at a pop up shop. And I've never had more fun with my wife since we worked out in the park together. Like it's so much fun for us to work together. together. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. Cool. Well, thank you guys for joining and thank best you. of luck with everything. Yes. And uh, congrats on, on the new location. Appreciate it.